Honesty, passion, experience. It's Timberwolves Explosion, hosted on the sportstuff.com. And now, your host, Paladino Joey. Hello again, Timberwolves fans. Are you ready for the explosion of Timberwolves basketball? I am your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Timberwolves Explosion is available on the sportstuff.com, iTunes, Stitcher, and Double Twist. It's a pleasure to be back on board once again. As ladies and gentlemen, you have a two in one week for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yeah, a winning week. Remember what that feels like? <laughs> yeah, it's it's back and uh I had a good feeling about it, uh, but, well, there it is. I actually, you know, it, it's pretty much exactly how it turned out, but it could have been 3-0. and oh, That's the sad part. Um, I did pick the Wolves to go 2-1, and one, and it's exactly how it went. Uh, wolves over Phoenix, Wolves over Atlanta. It's like, at the last second, I was like, you know, I think the Wolves will beat Atlanta, and then they did. And I had a good feeling about it. Carl Anthony Towns strong all week, but uh, the Houston game, the Wolves should have won this one. That's the heartbreaker. Let's get to that. Saturday, December the 17th. The Wolves should have won this game. Carl Anthony Towns from the get-go. I swear. I swear. It's like, call me goofy. Call me whatever. But I swear. It's like this show and Brave the Wild. I swear. It's like it's like the players listen to the show because whenever I call somebody out, they respond like immediately. I mean, Carl Anthony Towns, I was screaming about get down low and bring your identity back. He won Rookie of the Year for a reason. Carl did go down low. Uh, he still attempted four threes in the game. He still was on the perimeter, but nothing like the Chicago game. I mean, this guy was on the attack from the get-go. Went up with 41 points, 15 rebounds. He turned the ball over six times, though, and that did not help down the stretch in this one. But the Wolves hung tight with the uh, Houston Rockets the whole game. It ended up going to overtime. The Wolves ended up losing 111-109. But, I mean, the Wolves built a huge lead in that second quarter. It was so exciting. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns just dominant. Throughout this game, um, Zach Levine hit a few threes in the in the game. Obviously, uh, 24 points for him. Wiggins was not sharp at all. Certainly not the same guy that you saw in the past versus the uh, James Hardens of the world, but he was on Trevor Ariza. Both of them actually struggled the whole game. Ryan Anderson and Jang, that didn't go so well. Ryan Anderson making 7 of 16 from the outside and was just brutal down the stretch. Eric Gordon, it felt like he made everything, but he only was 4 of 10 in the game. I think you come back and look at it. That's it? He was only 4 of 10 from 3? It, it, it Seriously, it felt like everything was going in. Uh, Harden was kind of wild and such, but he still went up with 28 points. He got 13 assists in the game, but of course 7 turnovers, and that helped the Wolves cause that the Wolves actually had more turnovers than the Rockets in this one. And again, that was crucial down the stretch, but also poor perimeter defense is what did the Wolves in in this one. I mean, the Wolves were winning almost the whole game. Um, a lot of Funny calls went against the Rockets, and you got to watch Coach Pringles, who's no longer Coach Pringles because he shaved his mustache. He looks kind of funny now. He looks a lot different. Um, they just found a way to win this game, did the Rockets. They just hung in there the whole time, despite the fact the Wolves were building leads and such, but they just would not go away. And so unfortunate the Wolves couldn't finish the job in this one. Rubio solid again. He got almost all the minutes at point guard. Chris Dunn barely visible in this one. You barely noticed he was out there. He only made one basket along the way, a couple assists and such, but again, real quiet in the game. And again, the Tyus uh, Jones fans out there, not been happy because he saw basically no time this whole week. So that's where the frustration would come in with that. A very winnable game for the Wolves, despite the fact, again, Houston is a good team. Um, it was a low-scoring fourth quarter for the, for the longest time. Both teams kind of trading misses. The Wolves still led, the lead, though, with like a, <laughs> with like a minute remaining. By nine points, and they still find a way to lose this one. Um, people were turning the game away. We're moving on for the night. The Rockets end up hitting three consecutive three-pointers. Just no defense whatsoever. The Wolves unable to finish in their plays. And just no defense at all on the perimeter. After the Wolves played pretty strong defense most of the game, the Rockets were fairly low scoring. And then all of a sudden, again, 28 points in that fourth quarter because of those threes very late in the in the quarter. They would have held the Rockets to under 20. The Rockets were held under 20 at that point, but then again took over at the last minute, ended up tying the game. The Wolves unable to finish on their end. Uh, just never clutch in the fourth, it seems like. <laughs> Once in a while, the Wolves can be clutch in the fourth. You get the, you get Carl up down low making a shot last year against the Rockets, but um, an occasional Rubio three-pointer, stuff like that. But this it wasn't meant to be this time around. Wiggins awful the whole game, 5 of 17. 
And when you saw the game go to overtime, you just had a bad feeling. Um, you just you just couldn't believe the Rockets tied the game up. It's it just sickening. And then fourth quarter, just um, the Wolves hung in there, but didn't finish the job. The Rockets ended up stealing this one away. Ended up going to the whole free throws and such. And the Wolves still hung on with the, with the threes from Zach Levine. Uh, but it wasn't enough. There wasn't meant to be. Uh, the Rockets made all their free throws for the most part. They'd miss one here and there, and then the Wolves would come back, hit a three. But the Rockets had built a nice enough lead in, a, in, in the overtime period that the Wolves were unable to capitalize and come back in this one. Very frustrating. It's it's crazy to imagine the Wolves could have been on a four-game win streak here, <clears throat> but instead we're left with a two-game win streak <laughs> after that. But three out of four, that's pretty good. Okay, would have been nice, but uh, I guess there's a reason that the uh, the Rockets are as good as they have been. Uh, this was their 10th straight win, and they end up losing a game and then winning again. Rockets, very strong, though. Third seed in the Western Conference. They move up to 21-7 and seven at this stage last Saturday on December the 17th. Um, heartbreaking loss for the Wolves. They, they played their ass off, but then just let it go in the end. Um, this harkens back to an old memory of mine. I've, I've mentioned it in the past on this show, but for those of you, maybe you're new to the show, I don't think I mentioned it in a long time, but again, harkens back to way back in the day. Uh, circa maybe 2000, 2001, maybe 02 at the latest. I, I don't think it was 02. It was like 2000, 2001-ish. No, this must have been like 99 because Bobby Jackson was the point guard. This is way back, the 99-2000-ish around then. Yes, 99-2000-ish. Uh, Wolves led by 8 points with 41 seconds left against the Houston Rockets. Bobby Jackson was at point guard. Up the court, turnover. <laughs> Terrell must have been hurt or something, like typical Terrell Brandon, right? Wolves are playing so well the whole game. Up the court, turnover by uh, Bobby Jackson, layup for Houston. Okay, six-point game. Up the court, turnover four-point game. Rockets with another layup up the court. Turnover. <sighs> the Wolves dropped by seven. That's what it was. Up by seven with 41 seven seconds left. Turnover. Wolves only lead by one. Okay, just protect the ball. Make a basket. Let's get out of here. This is scary. Turnover. Rockets score, and the time expires, and the Rockets win the game. Wolves can't finish on their end once, and did the Rockets win by one, and I remember a plastic beer bottle, probably Miller Lite, which sucks. I would never sponsor Miller Lite, but unless, of course, they offered me a ton of money, but I'd never drink it. I think it's awful. Um, let's get a little Sierra Nevada celebration going here. It's a little bit better, just a little bit, especially this time of year, of course. That's just, just around, around Christmas time, um, but a little plastic beer bottle started going clunk, 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 clunk down in my old little section of 237 back in the day. It started clunking down to me down those concrete stairs there at Target Center, and it landed right to me. I was like, perfect timing. I pick it up and fling it right over the balcony and run the hell out of there. I mean, I was furious. <laughs> I just flung that thing as hard as I could and ran out of there. Uh, there was nothing in the bottle, and it was not glass. I don't think anybody got hurt, but maybe somebody was surprised a little bit, like, whoa, <laughs> that type of thing. Um, yeah. I got the hell out of there. Nobody saw it. Nah, 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 boo, boo. But uh, that's pretty much my feelings for that game and this one. This one. Oh, I try not to cough to death. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, it harkened back to that one. It was just a last-second comeback, and then the Rockets win the freaking game. And you just left like, did we really lose here? What the hell happened? Unreal. Bullcrap. So we go to Monday, December the 19th. A solid played game. Not the best defense you ever saw, but the Wolves' offense was very good. Um, I thought Wiggins was going to show up for that Houston game, and he didn't at all, and that was extremely frustrating. But you're going to continue to hear the name Carl Anthony Towns all week. Very, 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 very strong week. Another double-double, 28-15. and 15. He is rebounding the crap out of the ball. And it's like, here, here you go. This is Carl's identity. Now, he got a lot of rebounds against the Bulls, too, but still, all those damn three-pointers. Carl going down low some more again against a, a team that's undersized at center at this stage. Or, in course, Tyson Chandler's <laughs> Tyson Chandler's case, he's he's ancient. He he looks like a caveman with that beard. He might as well be. I mean, he he's ancient. He's not the same guy he was. He's been in the league, like, I don't know how long. Like, he's, he was drafted in, what, 1999? I mean, ancient history, Tyson Chandler. Um... I don't think he counts. Just go down there, take advantage. You got, um, you know, Alex Len is quirky. He'll, he'll get the blocks, and he got two in this game. You know, he, he always sneaks in and gets blocks at the strangest times. Um, <laughs> but Carl was excellent the whole game. Very strong, twenty-eight and fifteen. Like I mentioned, Rubio very strong again. Twelve assists in this one. He was he was a near triple double against the uh, 
rockets, but it wasn't like that high. It was like seven rebounds, eight assists, and like 10 points uh, against the Rockets. This one, only eight points. He's a single double. That's the funny part. No double double for Rubio again. He just can't get it. He can't get the double digit points. <laughs> but he did manage the 12 assists. Very fun to watch in the game. Chris Dunn's minutes have been limited, but it's very, very efficient in this game. He did have three turnovers, which I didn't like, but Chris Dunn coming up behind people and blocking shots, not only in this game, but in the Atlanta game. That's the Dwayne Wade side that I love very much about Chris Dunn, because remember how Dwayne Wade in his younger days would come up behind people and block shots. Uh, he's still capable of it, but not not like he used to be, because he's had just knee injuries and such. He's not the same guy. Uh, Chris Dunn, I love the guy's defense. I love how he can be a weak side defender as well, coming behind people, knocking the ball away. Uh, Chris Dunn, really, this guy has a very bright future in this league. And his, his strength and size is going to be very valuable at that point guard position in the future. Um, Shabazz Muhammad, just, I, I don't know. You know what I'm seeing out of Shabazz this whole week? A lot of his old habits when, was, when he was a rookie and kind of the reason why Edelman would bench him at times even though much to our chagrin, we wanted to see him out there because he was capable of some good play. And he usually plays well against the Suns. He was okay in this one, but generally speaking, during this week, and really for the longest time now, you, you get airball three-pointers. He takes weird shots. His defense is not is almost never good. I don't know. Um, I don't know. He, he, he His decision-making, not what it should be. He was better the last two years. I think this year in his rookie year, kind of messy, kind of goofy. Uh, it's kind of bringing back some of those old habits, and it's it's frustrating to watch. Uh, Zach Levine, this game and the next one, will shoot four of eight from three-boy range. 50%, of course. The catch and shoot, and, a, and of course, a little bit of dribble and release as well. He's got, gotten better at that the last year. I still like the catch and shoot more, but hey, if, if it goes in, it goes in, I suppose. As long as you're not forcing up shots constantly and hurting this team like... Uh, <laughs> Like Rashad McCants used to do. I keep bringing that name up because I don't want anybody to be that that guy. Nemanja to be Alicia had a lousy game, just invisible again, missing shots, missing a couple three pointers. Basically, turned the ball over a few times and eh, a whole lot of nothing from Nemanja in 13 minutes in that game. Uh, but again, Towns taking the ball down low for the most part. He still shoots the threes. He still hangs out in the perimeter. But again, better, better, better. But he's been a lot better this whole week. I swear he listens to this show. <laughs> Andrew Wiggins, much more aggressive in this game. Didn't get to the free throw line, but still making his, his uh, mid-range shots and attacking the basket. We appreciate that very much. Uh, didn't draw a whole lot of fouls in the game, but still, at least, at least, uh, at least you're seeing a more aggressive Andrew Wiggins and a more sharp Andrew Wiggins. Gorgie Zheng, just solid. Um, not a major stat stuffer, but a solid game. Almost a double-double, though, in this one. And, of course, he should play well against the Phoenix Suns, who don't have much of a front line. I mean, Marquise Chris, P.J. Tucker, eh. And P.J. Tucker was getting a big attitude with the ref a couple of times. He ended up getting <laughs> getting a technical foul along the way, along with Marquise Chris. Um, just going on and on with the ref. You could just see he just wouldn't let it go, and it was kind of frustrating. Another thing that's frustrating, again, and who am I to say this, but only 12,000 people at the game. That's it? Hmm. Only 12,000 people at the game. Huh. That's kind of odd. I, I don't understand. I mean, they're, I understand the, the win-loss record is frustrating people, but they're still fun to watch, and their tickets aren't that expensive. In a Phoenix game, I can't imagine the tickets would be expensive. Uh, Brandon Knight, the future Timberwolf, maybe? Maybe one of those, uh, maybe one of those guys the Wolves might go after at some point. Should we trade Ricky Rubio? Um, I like that Rubio's playing better because it raises his trade value. It's showing people, hey, you know, you want a pass first point guard? Here he is. Dang, dangle, dangle, dangle. Here he is, right here. <laughs> Come trade deadline in February, which is not that far away anymore. Um, I would not mind Brandon Knight on this team. I'm sure it would probably take more than Rubio to get him because he's really, really good. I uh, loved him. The, uh, he didn't make a three pointer in the game, but he was aggressive and solid. The whole way. Devin Booker, man, that guy, he, he's definitely an athlete, but he's a bit wild and such. Did not have his best game. <clears throat> Eric Bledsoe was certainly the best player on the Suns in this game. But again, uh, Brandon Knight, the second best player. I mean, it's a great, great couple of point guards there. That, that split minutes, they play together and such. They, you know, they, 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 they kind of mix it up in and out and such with those two. Some of them, you know, Eric Bledsoe plays some shooting guard. Brandon Knight, uh, in and out also at times. Maybe he'll be the playing, starting point guard with the Booker and such, of course. Um, or not starting, but the guy on the floor, we'll say. But uh, a nice, solid win for the Wolves. Again, not the best defense ever, but Phoenix is an outside shooting team, like it or not. They've been that way since since Dan Marley was there. I mean, they we're talking, you know, 93, 90, 90, like 89. We're talking way back in the day. 
So, I mean, <clears throat> it, it is what it is. They're going to make some threes. High-scoring game, but a fun one to watch. If uh, Definitely, if you don't mind a higher-scoring game, which most of us don't. The big three, again, all in the 20s. 26 for Wiggins, 28 for Towns, and 23 for Levine. Not the best game for Levine, but certainly not the worst. He made the shots he needed to. Uh, a, a solid performance. I mean, <laughs> if you can say a, a quiet 23 from Zach, that's pretty good. I mean, obviously, he's a 20, 21 points a game guy in his third year at age 21. I mean, that's an extremely exciting future for all of us as Wolves fans with Zach Levine at shooting guard. That guy I'll never see the bench again unless, again, some people would like to see him come off the bench. There's, you, we've heard that from the Dan Barreros and such, and I don't completely disagree. But at the same time, you got to have somebody <laughs> legitimate to start at, at uh Shooting guard, unless of course you move Wiggins over and start Nemanja. But what is Nemanja doing to deserve any playing time? Nicole Aldrich, Jordan Hill, I've always thought should be getting significant playing time. Even Adrian Payne, who I made fun of last night on the Flips Army page. There's a shout out to them, of course. Flips Army, look that up on Facebook. Uh, and I got a teeny tiny bit of backlash from, I believe, Tyler Berg is his name. He's saying, hey, you know, Adrian Payne isn't that... <laughs> Adrian Payne, I'm not a huge fan, but people rip on him too much. And yeah, no, he, he's okay, whatever. Um, you can't really count on major minutes from him. Uh, the rumors out there are the Wolves are looking for front court help. And if it's Netherlands Noel, because uh, Philadelphia is one of them, yes, please, please. <laughs> I'm all in with Netherlands Noel, man. Perfect addition to this team. And people talk about Gorgie Jen going to the bench, Netherlands Noel starting. You know what? Sure. Yes. Yeah, I'm perfectly fine as long as Netherlands could stay healthy. He's not getting any minutes over there in Philly. Get him if you could. That would be great. If it's Rubio, okay. Uh, then Tyus Jones gets some playing time. Gets regular playing time as the as the immediate backup to Chris Dunn. Yes, you're kind of going like, here's the ball, Chris. But Chris Dunn is looking like he deserves to get extensive minutes. You don't have to play Chris Dunn 40 minutes a game yet, though. Maybe you go with 28 and you give Tyus the rest. You give Tyus 20. That would not piss anybody off. And Tyus Jones knows how to win at this league. He's a smaller guy, but 20 minutes for Tyus Jones ain't going to hurt anybody. Um... That's not a bad idea. I mean, Nerlens, you know, you make up for maybe a lesser defense from Tyus with a Nerlens Noel in the front court. So, uh, you know, and you still have Gorgie on the on the on the B team getting significant minutes. It's not like he's not going to play. So, there it is. Uh, very cool. That's a very cool idea because I mean, obviously, you would probably throw in Adrian Payne, somebody like that, just to kind of fill the the whole situation, fill the roster out for Philadelphia, and also. <sighs> You got to kind of maybe get rid of some pieces, that type of thing. Guys that you're not playing, give them a chance. Maybe Philadelphia likes Adrian Payne, at least for a little bit. Um, But that's a move I would highly consider. That was uh, Darren Doogie Wolfson out there again, one of the conversations out there looking for front court help. That's that's been in multiple sources across the way. Philadelphia is one of the teams. I forgot the other one now already because the Philadelphia one got me so excited. Uh, Wolves head to Atlanta, and they win the game, uh, but Dwight Howard, of course, not playing. Well, I guess that's not a huge surprise for anybody. God, I love those uniforms. I've mentioned that many times. Um, the Hawks should be winning more games, I think, but they're definitely lacking in the star in the star department. Um, but Paul Millsap, it's like I always saw him as kind of like a Al Jefferson clone, but he's way, way more versatile than Al Jefferson. I mean, he's more athletic. He can, he can hit from the outside, but man, he really attacked the rim. He made, as good as Carl was in this game, and Carl wasn't spectacular, but he was good. He made Carl look pretty bad on the pump fake. Uh, he just pump faked Carl, froze him, and then just drew, blew by him to the right side, jammed that thing. Ugh, two-handed, two-handed flush, or whatever they call it. Uh, both of them didn't even get 20 points in the game, which is hard to believe. <laughs> Carl didn't shoot that great, and he attempted three threes, and I don't know. He, it's like he has no motion on his three-point shots. Doesn't doesn't jump at all, which is, I guess, okay for a guy at his height. Um, but he was still solid in the game. His defense was all right most of the way. Generally speaking, the Wolves' defense is good. But at the same time, I would say this game was more sloppy than defense defensive-minded. It seemed like both teams were in too much of a hurry the whole night. Now, of course, this was Wednesday, December the 21st. Pardon me for not mentioning that part. Um, got a live studio audience here. Bugs flying around. What the hell? In December? What is this? Okay, sorry about that. Let's move on. Um, 18 rebounds for Carl, though. He got the rebounds off of all the Atlanta misses. Uh, sloppy performance by the Atlanta Hawks. 41%. Not the worst you ever saw, 
But again, both teams seem like they're in too much of a hurry constantly. Oh, let's go for it. Oh, missed the layup. Oh, okay, turn the ball over. Oh, okay, here we go. Shot. Oh, boy, air ball. Oh, all right off the front of the rim. Way off. What the hell was that? And that was most of the night, it seemed like. Um, Dennis Sh- Schroeder. I don't know. I, you know, you, you, you always think of Schrader because of like the former quarterback in the NFL. Guys like that. There's all in uh, Jordan Schrader with the, with the Minnesota Wild. But it is Schroeder, like... Like you know, Linus and Lucy and Charlie Brown. You know what I mean? Schroeder playing the piano. I don't. I don't think I could see Dennis playing the piano. But uh, <laughs> I like him, man. Uh, too many three point attempts. A little too trigger happy. One of seven. Slow down, dude. That's terrible. <laughs> Mike Muscala. What the hell? The hell did this guy come from? Very solid six man off the bench for Atlanta. Sixteen points off the bench made it look easy. Hitting all three of his three point attempts. Just a solid performer for the Hawks. Uh, Tim Hardaway had a really nice uh, alley-oop dunk. Like, people caught sleeping. I believe it was, I don't know if it was Zach Levine or who it was, Wiggins, I think. Um, but that was it. That was the only, I mean, Tim Hardaway was in there for only for one minute. And he was a plus seven in that stage. Why did the Hawks take him out? I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what what, what, what they're doing. Uh, I keep forgetting the guy's name. I'll just call him Bulldozer because that's what it looks like, Mike Bulldozer. <laughs> I forget how to pronounce it. I mean, I can. I mean, obviously know who he is. The former Spurs assistant, and of course, a successful run with Atlanta. But I don't know. This team's dropping off pretty quick. And yes, missing Howard doesn't help. But fifteen and four, fourteen and fifteen. That's underachieving with this lineup. It's not a great team, but they're good. Uh, Corver can hit from the outside. Cephalosia's solid defender. I think he's turning into a Tayshon Prince uh, type out there. But still, you know, with the amount of minutes. But still, he's still more valuable than Tayshon Prince. Um, I think Hardaway should get more minutes. What the hell? Chris Humphreys doesn't even see the court, which is kind of funny for all you Humphrey haters out there. Uh, Schrader, maybe Schroeder, pardon me. Maybe they made a, maybe they made too quick a move uh, getting rid of Jeff Teague, but I guess it is what it is. They're losing Jeff Teague. But again, they all like Schroeder. He's very good. I like him a lot. He's so quick, and, and he can... <laughs> <clears throat> he's, he's good at getting to the loose ball, all that. Quickness is very much there, but again, a little bit too trigger happy, a little too, a little too wild out there. Uh, very dangerous though, attacking the basket so fast. I mean, you, you you can't keep up with them. And it's funny how the Wolves held the Hawks to only eighty four points, ninety two eighty four. Yet it seemed like the Hawks got like got like fifteen layups in this game. I mean, my goodness, it might have been well, it's probably more like thirty. It felt like most of their points were off of layups. Um, they couldn't hit from the outside, which was helpful to us, but. I mean, the transition defense in this game, not that good. Uh, the Hawks are, very, are a very fast team, but so are the Wolves. I mean, why can't you keep up with them a little tiny bit better? Like, get in front of somebody once in a while, um, if possible, without getting called for a blocking foul. <laughs> that would be appreciated. Um, but that was kind of the case. Uh, lots of layups and such. It was mostly the sloppiness of the Hawks. The defense was good, though. It was good. It was better than it could have been, that type of thing. Um, the Hawks only with 10 turnovers, yet you still hold them to 84 points. That's still good, so we will definitely take it. Um, field goal percentage for both teams, not very good. About 41-42% apiece. The Wolves just better down the stretch. End up winning the game, and thank you very much for that. Uh, Shabazz Muhammad, again, did not like what I saw. I don't like him anymore. I'm sorry, I, I, you know, he's, he's somebody I would consider trading during the uh, trade deadline, maybe he's somebody that the that Philadelphia wants in order to get Nerlens Noel. I say, here you go. Um, yeah, you'd lose some. You'd lose some of the very little scoring punch you can get off the bench. But then again, Tyus Jones, free Tyus, as they say. Hashtag free Tyus. And if you trade Rubio, you will hashtag free Tyus. <laughs> Cole Aldridge benched completely in this one. Definitely not what the doctor ordered. Uh, has been Cole Aldridge. I'm not that impressed and. I don't think anybody really expected much from him anyway. Uh, Chris Dunn, another one of those blocks from behind. It actually wasn't even registered as a block. I guess he just knocked the ball out of the guy's hands, and it didn't count as anything, just knocked the ball away. But love love that weak side uh, approach by Chris Dunn, able to come up behind people, knock the ball away. Um, he's got a wonderful future in this league, and I'd like to see him get more minutes, as I'm sure many others would as well. Rubio, another single-double. <laughs> With this time, 10 points, 8 assists, 5 rebounds, that type of situation. But Carl rebounding the heck out of those Atlanta misses, and good on him. Wiggins with 7 rebounds. He's been getting the rebounds the past the past month or so. His, his rebounding has definitely gone up, and it's greatly appreciated. 
down the stretch here. So thank you again for that. Uh, Chris Dunn's field goal percentage in the month of December, almost 50%. That's another thing of note that those of you out there should think about <clears throat> when you consider the future of this guy and that he does have starting potential long-term. <clears throat> he even made a three-pointer in this game, so we'll take that. Oh, my, my throat's getting filled up again. How crazy is that? So we'll just kind of look to uh, wrap up this segment with the uh, Alpha Wolf Award. Sorry for the noises there. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns will get the Alpha Wolf Award for this show. No doubt about it. He was the best player the whole week. And congratulations. Thank you very much. for Thank you very much for regaining the identity we hoped you would have. And boy, what a rebounder he's becoming. Starting to remind me of Garnett. I remember how he... Uh, Starting to remind me of Garnett, not as a player in terms of like he's similar to Garnett because he's not. Uh, the most similar guy on this roster to Garnett is Gordy Zheng by a mile. Very similar to Garnett. Uh, kind of lower scoring, rebounding, defense, that type of thing. But of course, a lesser version. So don't even start with me on that. <laughs> but he's be reminding me of Garnett's second year where he started out like, man, wh- where are the rebounds? What's going on here? Like he eight, nine rebounds, stuff like that. And even that year, I remember that year, he was even less than that. Garnett wasn't rebounding at all, it seemed like. And for Carl last year, who averaged 10 rebounds, and it's all of a sudden he's getting seven, eight, nine, seven, seven, six, seven, And it's like, what the hell? And then all of a sudden, some point during the season with the Garnett there, he started rebounding like crazy. I mean, he was double-double every single night. He, he was getting 13, 15 and such, and he was one of the better rebounders in the league ever since. And now Carl, <clears throat> as we head closer to the midpoint of the, of the regular season, we're not there yet. We're about a quarter into the season or so about that. Uh, and he's rebounding the crap out of the ball the past week. Uh, amazing week for Carl Anthony Towns. <laughs> so he is definitely the alpha wolf. As for the Johnny Flynn Memorial, I'm going to have to go with uh, your buddy Shabazz Muhammad. I, I, I mean, again, the old habits, the bad shots, poor decision-making, defense is nothing nothing to write home about. Just It's not impressive at all. Uh, Carl for the month of December, which I was hoping to pull up. Yes, 14 rebounds in 10 games. 14 rebounds a game for Carl Anthony Towns. Field goal percentage significantly down, but it is what it is. Uh, <clears throat> it'll continue to go back up. I gotta hope. Three-point percentage way down, which tells me slow down, Carl. Please, just slow down. Slow your roll with the threes. It's way down. Less than 25%. I say take it easy and be the guy you were meant to be from day one. Ha, you know, 14. <laughs> keep, 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 keep in those 13, 14 rebounds and you'll be one of the best players in this league for many years to come. Averaging about 22 points a game at this point. But uh, averaged more so far in November. I mean, he needed a nice 41-point game against Houston. And that was a very, very welcome for Carl. After a, after a frustrating week last week. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> kind of a longer segment than I expected, but I just got wordy again. I apologize. We'll take a quick break and we'll preview four games. And then segment number three, fan interaction. Hey, don't cancel those playoff tickets yet. Ah, we're going to have to wait and see on that. And we are back here on Timberwolves Explosion, segment number two, preview segment. We got four games to preview, ready to rock and roll, two on the road, two at home, kind of a little flip-floppy doppy going on here, including a Christmas game, yes, Christmas, yes. So Friday, December the 23rd, the Minnesota Timberwolves will host the Sacramento Kings, the Sacto Sacramento Kings, oh goody, DeMarcus Cousins and his crazy ass, yeah, you know that guy. Okay, Vince, I know you like him. And, yeah, he's good, but he's kind of too much. Um, yeah, he's pretty damn good, too. Uh, 29 points and about 11 rebounds a game thus far this season. Oh, boy. The Timberwolves had an interesting history against this team. Uh, we've won many, and we've lost a, a few. Uh, I think the Wolves' success rate against Sacramento the last several years has been pretty good. Last time around, though, not so much. Kind of frustrating. You know, it was a 106-103 loss on Saturday, October the 29th, way back. At the beginning, that was when I was talking about how Mr. Carl Anthony Towns is getting manhandled by, uh, you know, the more veteran centers in the NBA, getting told, hey, you know what, <laughs> you're, you're good and you have a nice future, but you aren't, but, but you ain't above me just yet. Uh, Marcus Cousins got on my nerves that whole game, but it is what it is. Rudy Gay, oh, you know, the, the, the Andrew Wiggins, that's all he's ever going to be. You know, when you compare the stats between the two, uh, over their career, Rudy Gay's never averaged 22 points a game, and Andrew Wiggins already is, so... 
I don't know if I buy that. I, I, I think he's closer to De, DeMar DeRozan, and ultimately I think the, all of the best career potential for Andrew Wiggins would be Dominique Wilkins. One day, I hope that would happen, but of course he's not there yet. Uh, Wiggins had a 29-point game against Rudy Gay. He beat him 29-28 20, to 28 in that one. Towns, of course, struggled mightily in that one. Um, not very aggressive, all that good stuff. I think the Wolves will win this one, though. It is a home game. Uh, the Wolves have had time to build momentum. There's a totally different... Uh, there's a totally different vibe around the Wolves right now. Sacramento most recently defeated the Utah Jazz, though, 94-93. So that's something to consider. They've beaten the Portland Trailblazers in a pretty big matchup as well, where Marcus Cousins exploded 126-121. to That was in sack, though. But uh, for the Kings to win in Utah, that ain't bad. Uh, as we jump in, I'm gonna, I am gonna—I forget exactly how many points DeMarcus had in that. 55. Yeah, it wasn't 60. 55-point game for the... Ever uh, crazy DeMarcus Cousins. Great performance. Ty Lawson off the bench also. A guy I would lie, I would not mind seeing on the Wolves roster. A 16.8 assist uh, showing against Portland. Kind of a fun little game there. Portland dropping off. They're the 8th seed in the, in the Eastern Western Conference at this stage. But I do, despite the fact Sacramento's playing better, so are the Wolves. You know, there's again a totally different vibe around the team. They don't have this kind of nervous look that they've had pretty much coming out of the gate this year. They they had a swagger opening things up against uh, Memphis, but then it quickly dissipated in the second half as Marcus Sol and such had their way with Mr. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns, much to my chagrin. But I do think the Wolves win the game. Uh, the best player in this one is going to be Andrew Wiggins. Andrew Wiggins should be the best player in this game. I think he'll get upper 20s again. It'll be a nice matchup between Andrew Wiggins and the guy people think is his career potential. Uh, I disagree on that in a big way. I think Andrew Wiggins has a too too bright of a future to compare him with uh, Marcus or, or excuse me, to compare him with Rudy Gay. I, I, I just don't buy that. So again, Andrew Wiggins will get upper 20s, low 30s in the game. Carl Anthony Towns, you're hoping for a more aggressive effort. He's going to have a tough matchup with uh, him and, of course, Gargi Zhang will have a tough matchup with Boogie, as they call him. Unless he gets ejected from the game, maybe that'll happen. That's the hope for the Wolves. But uh, I'll, I'm going to go with the Wolves' victory at home against Sacramento. It'll be very high scoring. Uh, you're going to see Thibodeau yelling and screaming about better defense, you know, the whole game, like he always does. Um, and if the Wolves keep Sacramento under 100 points, I'm going to be extremely impressed, but I doubt it. Uh, we're going to look at a 111-109 victory. Minnesota outlasts Boogie and the Sacramento Kings, Andrew Wiggins with 32, 29-ish, and Boogie with, of course, 33, something like that, maybe even 40, for all we know, but that's what I, that's how I see things, and then on Christmas Day, yes, sir, let's uh, play that Charlie Brown music, let's play something, <laughs> Minnesota Timberwolves, finally, we'll have a Christmas game, it'll be on the road, so I hope they have a nice, happy Christmas Day in Oklahoma City, at least it'll be warmer for people that like warmer weather. I prefer winter at Christmas time. That's just how I roll. Australians, unfortunately, my Australian brothers out there would not uh, know what it means uh, or are, are not used to a, a cold Christmas. They're used to a warm Christmas because things are quite the opposite over there <laughs> on the eastern side of the planet. God bless them. Um, Russell Westbrook leading the league in scoring. He's Oscar Robertson right now. He's averaging a triple double. He is literally Oscar Robertson. The Wolves beating Oklahoma City, I don't have a whole lot of confidence in that. <laughs> I really don't. Uh, most recently, they beat the New Orleans Pelicans, who are improving, in my opinion. The Wolves, though, only one game behind New Orleans at this stage. Last time around, Oklahoma City romped all over the Wolves. The 30-point victory for them, November the 5th. That's when all of us were starting to say, wow, this Wolves team really ain't that good, are they? Uh, all kinds of talent on this Oklahoma roster. Uh, they don't have a great record necessarily, but of course they're not bad either. They're, at this stage, they're 17 and 12. They're in second place behind the Spurs in the Northwest Division. Not not the Spurs. They're behind somebody else. So, <laughs> my bad. It's Utah, believe it or not. Uh, half game behind them. So that'll be a nice matchup between those two following this season. Oklahoma City, though, five games above 500. I don't know why I thought the Spurs. That's the old division. Uh, Victor Oladipo. Second in scoring, I mean, I always, I, I was very happy with that acquisition. I would have thought, acquisition, pardon me, I would have thought, again, that Kevin Durant would have stayed there. I mean, you got nice players, you got Sabonis, so still has a nice future. Of course, nothing great yet, but really no rookies are off to a great start, other than, of course, 
Joel Embiid, and he's and he was drafted two years ago. He's had two years to kind of you know bulk up and such. So I don't know. Uh, he's one of those late bloomers, and he's going to probably roll to the rookie of the year if they still count him as that. And I guess they do. So I don't know. It is what it is. I'm bouncing all over the place. Uh, Enos Cantor always beats up on the Wolves. He always does. He, he doesn't have the greatest numbers ever, but he always beats the Wolves pretty good. And you're, of course, reminded Andre Roberson of Draft Night 2011, the old $5 million, $4 million bag for uh, <laughs> Kurt Rambis getting built up with the trade down, trade down, trade down for cash. <laughs> that was pretty entertaining. Um, to the point, though, I don't like the Wolves' chances in this game. Of course, Rubio and Westbrook, that's never been a good matchup. Really, nobody in Westbrook is a good matchup right now, unfortunately. Um... It'll be interesting to see Chris Dunn on him, but I'm sure it won't go very well in, in Chris Dunn's favor. But hopefully at least he steps up and isn't scared of him per se. At least it maybe attacks and maybe scores on uh, Russell Westbrook. Because, you know, Westbrook will, will score on anybody uh, that guards him. Um, I think the Wolves will lose on Christmas Day. And if they win, it would be the coolest thing ever. <laughs> but I do say Oklahoma City will win the game 110 to 100. 110 to 100, Oklahoma City wins the game. Uh, best performer in this one? Mm, Zach Levine. I, I got a feeling about Zach Levine on Christmas Day. I think he'll have a huge game. He'll, he'll get in the upper, th- he'll get in the, he'll, I think he's going to get 33 points. For some reason, that's showing up. But Zach Levine, I think, will be the best player in that game. And he will give us hope for a little while. But Oklahoma City, Russell Westbrook, and others along the way will start scorching the nets. So bonus, what a big surprise. He's he's the top three-point percentage guy. Actually, Jeremiah, Jer- Jeremiah Grant is the leading three-point guy, but he doesn't take as many as Sabonis, which is funny, 43%, so no surprise there. Just like uh, like father, like son. <laughs> Arvita Sabonis' is son, of course. Um, it'll be interesting to see him for the first time, uh, for some of us out there that didn't get to see that first game because we were feigning interest. We were watching it, but we barely saw it, and of course, Sabonis got limited minutes in that case. So hopefully it'll at least be a semi-entertaining game. But of course, the Wolves lost. Zach Levine will be the top performer. And then the Atlanta, the Atlanta Hawks come to Minnesota. How about that? How about that? Atlanta Hawks come back and the Wolves played so well against the Hawks last year. That's why I had a good feeling. And it seems like the ties have turned. And of course, Dwight Howard's out again. Surprise, surprise. Will he be back for this one? I have no idea. And I guess it doesn't really matter. Interestingly, before the Wolves played Atlanta, they, they the Hawks defeated the Oklahoma City Thunder, and they beat Toronto two days before. Go figure. So they lose to Orlando. They lose to Charlotte, which I could kind of understand. Orlando, what the hell? They give up 131 points to the Orlando Magic. 131. I would think that went to overtime, but I don't see OT next to it. What the hell is that? Yet yeah, they beat Toronto and Oklahoma City. Urban legend there. I I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Of course, Paul Millsap leads the way. Paul Millsap, Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder, of course, we saw him. We like uh, Very, very entertaining player. Marcus the Forecasters always liked him. Tim Hardaway. Uh, to this day, I don't know why. He only got one minute in that game. I don't know what's going on because he's averaging about 22. I don't know if there's some feud going on with him and the coach there. But it is what it is. And I, I think the Wolves win again over the Atlanta Hawks. I have a good feeling about it. I think the expect another low scoring game, but probably it'll be higher scoring than that one. I, I don't expect to see ninety two or eighty four. It'll be probably better played. I think the Wolves reach a hundred points in the game, and the Hawks reach ninety four. The Hawks will get ten more points. The Wolves will get eight more. <laughs> Basically, the Wolves will win by six, one hundred to ninety four. Best player will be. Well, if Dwight Howard isn't playing, Carl Anthony Towns is going to have another huge performance, in my opinion. But expect Wiggins again. To probably He'll probably lead the team in scoring, but Carl will be like the best player in terms of he'll get like 21-15-ish, and I think Andrew will get something 29-27 points in this game. And the Wolves will score 100 points and outplay the Atlanta Hawks again. You'll see Paul Millsap do his thing out there. He's a very, very good basketball player. I mean, he, he again, I always, go, I, I always used to compare him to Al Jefferson. I mentioned him many times that he's definitely become a better player than Big Al Jefferson. Uh, well, Chris Humphreys get to play in his homecoming. I don't know. <laughs> For his sake, I hope he does. But I'm sure most people don't care. Anybody that's been with a Kardashian, you don't really think well about them anymore. Because screw the Kardashians. They're garbage. They're, they're garbage. They really are. Uh, Wolves will win the game. So we go to Denver, Colorado. Denver, Colorado. 
The Wolves' history there is, eh, I, I don't know. I've never really liked the Wolves in Denver. Um, they've had some good games in the past, but I don't know. I don't feel so good about this one for whatever reason. The Wolves did lose by three points really early in the season. Remember, they were losing all those close games. November the 3rd, 102-99, heartbreaker. Ugh, just another frustration for all of us. Uh, Denver Nuggets, Wilson Chandler leading them in scoring. See, that's a thing. It's like, you should beat this team. You should. I mean, it's basically kind of, you know, there's no star on this team. It's kind of, I guess you could say it's kind of like Atlanta. It's like bit pieces, role players, and like second, third, third stars, third stars of the team type of guys. Like if Wilson Chandler's your leading scorer, I don't know. You don't scare me that much. Uh, Danilo Gallinari, of course, he always scorches the Wolves. 30, 38% on the season. Uh, Gary Harris, the former Michigan State alum, is scorching the net about almost making half of his threes so far this year. 46.2 for him. But, of course, very limited. Only nine games thus far with injury. Not sure where to go with this one. I, I, I don't think the Wolves win this game, though. We almost never play well there. On occasion, we do, but... I don't know how uh, the Wolves lost a, a home game on November the 3rd due to my extreme frustration on that one. I, I don't know how you couldn't be frustrated. Uh, not much going on with Harris right now. I guess he's, I guess he's, I guess he is healthy. So <laughs> boy, put a, put a body on him. Zach Levine. And to me, I think Zach Levine and Carl Anthony Towns will be the stars of this one. Carl, you know, he usually plays well against Denver. In the last game, last time around, he had a huge performance, 32 points. Actually, Wiggins played better than Zach. I think Zach will step up a bit. I'm sure Wiggins, you know, you will probably see all three guys score 20 in this game, which shouldn't again be a shock. It was Chris Dunn's first start of his career because Rubio already got hurt, and Chris had nine assists in the game. Very cool. But, of course, offensively, he really struggled. Only one of six, hitting a single shot and a free throw in the game. He even missed one of his free throws, which is pretty funny. Um, It'll be nice to see... Young Jamal Murray play. He plays about 20 minutes a game, 21 minutes a game. Nothing great yet, nothing to write home about, but uh, the numbers have gone up, though. I mean, he's opened the season barely getting in the games, averaging about four points a game. Now it's up to nine. So Jamal Murray heating up a little bit, as they say on NBA Jam. Uh, Nurkic, always like that guy. Uh, Jokic, always as well. Those two guys, valuable Euro uh, power forwards for this club. Moody Eye, I don't think he's as good as people were advertising. He's just another guy who, you know, he just another kind of, I don't know, like he's like half half point guard, half shooting guard. I don't know what he is at this point. Only averaging three, uh, four assists a game, 12 points. Just another guy. He's like he's decent at this and that, but not really good at anything per se. And a poor field goal percentage. I'm not impressed with Moody Eye so far to start out his, his career. Gary Harris, though, watch out. <laughs> Please put a body on that guy. That guy can scorch the net with a big time. And, of course, Will Barton, another Will Barton on the Denver Nuggets is another member of the 20, 2011 four million dollar bag draft. Yes, yes, I, I mentioned it again. Um, so I don't think the Wolves win though, as I keep stumbling over myself. I keep <laughs> uh, Denver is gonna Denver is gonna go out and win this one 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 oh six to 96. I'm, it's not going to be a very fun game for the Wolves. I'm sure they'll start scorching the net, and then the athleticism, Danilo Gallinari, Gary Harris will make their threes, stuff like that. And of course, Kenneth Fareed, who hasn't even been starting for the Nuggets, but he'll he'll magically get his 18 rebounds like he always does against the Wolves. And that's where the frustration will come in. Uh, Jamal Murray has actually started a couple games. I wanted to check up on that. Nothing. I mean, he played several minutes. Did not shoot at all. At all. 22% so far as a starter. <laughs> That's pathetic. Two of nine from the floor on average for young Mr. Jamal Murray. He's actually playing worse than he was in December, uh, November, pardon me. I, I don't know what happened there. He was actually averaging 12 points a game in November. Minutes are down and numbers are down. Five points a game less for Jamal Murray. Keep an eye on him, though. It'll be fun to watch. See, like a comparison to Chris Dunn. They don't play the same position necessarily. They're actually the same height, but Jamal Murray is a shooting guard. And, of course, Chris Dunn, we know him as a point guard here in Minneapolis. So it, it, it'll just be nice to see, you know, as you compare the drafts. It's very early. Nobody's really blowing up out of this draft so far. That's happened the last couple of years. Of course, of course, Carl Anthony Towns, you kind of knew he was going to win last year. And Andrew Wiggins was kind of by default. You kind of, I mean, that, that draft class didn't step up that much. Andrew was great, though. 
yeah, for the most part, particularly in the second half of the season. You'll see a Chris Dunn step up in the second half, and that may be where he'll take over that starting position should the Wolves uh, orchestrate a trade with Philadelphia or somebody like that for a young, young Ricky Rubio. So Wolves lose this one. It'll be a 2-2 two and two week. Wolves will get to 11-21 and 21 on the season. They will remain 10 games below 500. But eventually you're going to see an uptrend and the Wolves will probably finish in the mid-30s, I think, in victories this year. That's just my humble opinion. And we'll be back in the lottery, but it won't be high. It'll be like 11th. But of course, we all know who went 11th in the draft <laughs> for the Warriors years ago. So, And of course, 13th in the draft, the Wolves got Zach Levine, who ended up being way better than most of the players in that draft. So... You never know. Like the mid, like like the like just just out of the top ten, some gems slip. It, it happens, and then you have, <laughs> and then you have the Adrian Paynes of the world who go fifteenth overall. It's just fifteenth uh, overall, just two picks ahead with Zach Levine, and then you go to Adrian Payne with the Atlanta Hawks. Oh, so anything can happen in that situation. So there it is. We'll be back right after this for some fan interaction. And we are back here on segment number three, Tim Rolls Explosion, fan interaction. Let's get to the Twitter account, at Wolves Explosion, at Wolves Explosion. We'll give another shout out to Flip's Army. Please do join that, if you could. Trevor Wicker and kind enough to allow me to post Tim Rolls Explosion on that page, so please do give that a like. And of course, don't forget about the Tim Rolls Explosion page. We'll get to that next. I want to thank Vince Germano and Tanay Brown for retweeting the last episode of Tim Rolls Explosion. You guys are great, really Really greatly appreciated. Big time. So let's move forward here if we can. Because I keep bumbling around with this thing. <laughs> Hank McCoy at CRTSDE of the Courtside Podcast. Again, do check that out. Do sign up for the one-year subscriptions. Uh, $20. Uh, <laughs> yep. Um, awfully worth it. I was going <laughs> to... Yeah, um, they're, they're forming a network. You'll see, let's just say you'll see some more podcasts in there. That's what I'm trying to say. That's why I'm, I'm kind of excited about it. You're going to see more and more podcasts join that network. Um, take that as you will. Um, I'll join in. Uh, so it's very, very, very worth joining it for the premium shows. And of course, the free shows will still be available. Everything's on Podbean, but also the free ones will go to iTunes. So Podbean, of course, is an account, uh, uh, separate application out there where, again, you can join the premium. There'll also be the free shows on Podbean. But, again, the subscription ones for $20 a year, very worth it. Lasts the whole calendar season. So there you go. Thank you very, very much. Hank McCoy was saying, well, the Wolves are hanging around in this Houston game so far. Let's see how this pans out. People don't like to hear Thibs barking on the sidelines, but I love the fact I can hear him yell, attack to Zach Levine. Mm-hmm. Attack Zach, Zach attack, all that. I, I always called him the Levine machine from uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. Hank continues saying, oh, he needs to start his operation closer to the basket, that being Carl Anthony Towns, develop a, a back-to-the-basket game, then move outside. Yes, and it seemed like he was more back-to-the-basket, but he was shooting the baby hook shot. I'm not a big fan of it, but at least he makes it, that type of thing. Guys like uh, Nikola Pekovic, who had all these cool... Uh, post-up moves, and then he resorted to that, and it, I don't know, it was lower percentage, but uh, Carl makes those for the most part. Carl's definitely a better player in every aspect, and Nikola Pagovic, as far as I'm concerned, other than physicality. Uh, Hank says, Towns jacking up threes is just handing over possession. Who's got Thib's Twitter handle? I need to have a word. Yeah, for real, he says, hashtag for real, Hank again, McCoy, saying that. Yeah, and again, his three-point his three percentage has been less than 25% so far in the month of December. We're talking several games here. It's like Christmas already. So, <laughs> yeah, I think it's time to, like, get off that bandwagon for the time being for the, with the three-point range. You can take one or two a game, maybe. But, like, when, when you see one for eight against Chicago, it's a miracle we won that game. Um, is it, we're very fortunate that the Thibodeau defense started to take over. It started to finally appear. It's starting to make appearances. It was, it, it's not the best all the time. It wasn't the best against Houston late in that game. But it was there for a while. Uh, so it's starting to it's starting to make cameo appearances. Hopefully, it becomes more and more regular. Hank continuing saying these officials should be ashamed of themselves. That was atrocious. They called nothing all game, and of course, yeah, 
<laughs> there was tons and tons of physicality that wasn't getting called. Uh, fake Dave Benz tells me sell the team. I love Fake Dave Benz. That guy's funny. At Fake Dave Benz. It's at Fake and then underscore Dave Benz. For those of you who might want to give him a follow. Entertaining. Uh, where is everything? So many. There's all these in between things now. I don't know why it does that. Why Twitter is getting that way. At Levi, uh, Levi Wilson Brown, Levi Brown at Levi WB. Very cool. Says why has Dunn's minutes decreased over the last four games? I like Rubio and he's been getting back to what he's good at. I was basically saying Rubio has been playing better. Not that I not see. Not that I agree with reducing Dunn's minutes. It's just they're rewarding Rubio for playing better. That's basically what it is. Levi says, but Dunn hasn't done much wrong. And I, I agree, he really hasn't. Um, he hasn't had the best games ever, but at the most, for the most part, he's definitely a presence out there that he wasn't before. Uh, the first few, the first like two weeks or so of the season, Dunn was almost, you know, just, you know, like when a guy's just getting started, he's just like green. But now the, that that rawness is, is starting to fade away a bit. And Chris Dunn's starting to show more and more of what he will be in this league. Uh, love, love seeing him come up behind people and knock the ball away. But, of course, the aggressiveness, attacking the basket, drawing defenders his direction, and allowing him to kick it out to the Zach Levines and such. Hopefully not so much to Baz Muhammad for three-point range. I'm not a big fan. Levi continues saying, I thought it looked like Rubio got injured, either the Chicago or Houston game, and Dunn was going to end up playing more minutes. But on occasion, see, Dunn gets rewarded, too. When he's playing well, they're going to leave him in there, too. Maybe not for, like, huge stretches, but on occasion, Yes. So that'll wrap up the Twitter account. Thank you, Levi. I love the interaction. Uh, very much appreciate it. Older brother of Tanae Brown out there in New Zealand. I was almost going to say Australia again. I apologize for that. <laughs> uh, so the remaining, uh, the leaving off of episode 183, nothing really going on there. Got some likes, though. Really appreciate it. Let's get to the visitor posts. As I know, there'll be a few from Joe Phillips, Hank McCoy, Vince Germano. Bounce around a bit here. So we continue off of the Houston game. Here we go. Hank McCoy with a gold star type of a uh, post here. He says, okay, well, I just finished watching the Houston game. Ricky Rubio. Lazy fast break transition. Lazy passing. You don't have to throw the tricky pass every time. I agree. Lazy drives to the basket. Lazy defense. Stay on your man. Beverly's second chance points. And yes, Beverly is not a guy who should be, yeah, who shouldn't, Beverly is not a guy who should be getting second chance points whatsoever. I agree. Uh, Beverly's not a scorer. He's just mostly a physical defender type of guy, and that's about it. He'll score on occasion, but not that much. Uh, Hank wraps up that little part of his toast saying, oh, not the main part of it, I should say, L-A-Z-Y. Make that trade, coach. I hear Nerlens Noel is looking for a new team, and that is bouncing around. The first Noel is bouncing around. Born is the career of Nerland's Noel. Yes. <laughs> and yes, put that in song. I, I don't really want to sing it right now. But if he comes here, I probably will. That might be a little deal that I'll throw in there. I might sing Born is the... Yeah, there we go. Philip Brown out of Aussie says, It was Wiggins who blew the game. Team effort to blow that one. Well... The perimeter defense sucked, yes. It was just like the guys were sleeping. Joe Phillips says, Joseph Phillips says, what is happening with Wiggins and Cat to a lesser degree and other games? Not this one. Are they not as good as we think they are? Have they been instructed to play differently? Have they lost confidence or just bad judgment? There's bad judgment. I, I don't know, but at the same time, I don't know. Where is the spin move, Andrew? Where? Why is he not getting to the free throw line all of a sudden? You're just seeing the same Terrell Brandon-like mid-range shots. Andrew has a little bit of Terrell Brandon in him, a little bit of stop and pop. If he can make it, great. But let's yeah, make it great, right? <laughs> that's the old uh, that's the that's the old Pizza Hut line. Um, but get get back to that free throw line, attack the basket again. I don't know if it's fear of physicality or defenses are, are guarding him differently, and I'm sure they have been. You, you have noticed a little bit of different approach on Andrew after the strong start. But make adjustments, okay, Andrew? Come on, you you can do it. It's possible. And I do think Andrew, again, will be better than Rudy Gay. I hate that comparison so much. And I keep bringing it up because I hate it. Hank McCoy says, Joseph Phillips, this might be something small, but I like it better when Cat starts his moves from inside the three-point line instead of outside. Well, yeah, absolutely. I'm totally sold on his ball handling. And there have been a few times where he just rushes. What did he say this? Uh, where he just rushes and has too much time to dribble. My bad. This thing was loading. <laughs> 
Wiggins needs to get back to being more aggressive, and I and I think a little more selfish. Yeah, I mean, he is the franchise guy, is he not? He's at minimum a franchise guy, if not one uh, A, one B, with Mister uh, Earl Anthony Towns, and I do think he's the go-to guy uh, scoring. Scoring-wise, absolutely, Andrew Wiggins is the go-to guy, the number one scoring option on this team, without a doubt. Joe says, Joey, uh, that was Taylor saying, Hank, he hit the nail on the head. Uh, it was lackluster horse grab. Was, uh, we absolutely had that game. What the hell? Uh, Joe says, Joey, I didn't get to watch it. Only the ESPN score feed. Yep, according to what we had, the ball with three seconds, and Zach stepped out of, yeah, stepped out of bounds. Can you tell me what happened on that play? Well, Zach tried to kind of force his way. He tried to kind of slide past James Harden on the left side, which, of course, would have been out of bounds. He was trying to scoot past him and then hoist up a three. And then and then James Harden kind of had... James Harden kind of blocked the way, and the Wolves tried to say that James Harden pushed him. Uh, there might have been a little bit of contact, but the refs aren't going to call that in that situation, unfortunately. I wish they would, but they didn't. And that was it. Uh, the Wolves lose the game. Horrible way to finish it. I should have mentioned that on the last... <laughs> In the first segment, but I just kind of, I was too just locked into keeping things going there. Uh, Joe Phillips says he ran, he was just losing the lead, and that pissed me off even more than that play. Uh, Hank McCoy was saying Joseph Phillips, uh, he ran the ball upside the court and was just met by Harden. Harden may have bumped him slightly, but the replay was not really clear. So, yep, exactly. Um, And I was, uh, Wiggins, I was saying, uh, Wiggins does take dumb shots at times. Uh, Joe Phillips responds with, I think I remember comparing his attack in some games last year to Harden. He has so much success attacking and if not getting to the line. What is your opinion that is, what is your opinion has changed? Uh, I, he's not attacking the basket. Basically, he's just settling for jump shots more. That's that's what I think is changing with Hank, uh, Hank McCoy, pardon me, with <laughs> Andrew Wiggins at this point. You're not seeing the spin move either. The spin and kind of scoop play, kind of a, a la Dominique Wilkins. Uh, Dominique would spin and dunk too. I mean, but he would spin quite a bit. And I think Andrew has that capability. I know defenses are ready for it on occasion, but not all the time. That's why you don't do it constantly. Uh, surprise them. You know, go for it. Go for it here and there. Once and t- once or twice here and there. Why not? Um, Andrew's lack of aggressiveness is definitely hurting him right now. And that's where you're hearing the Rudy Gay comparisons because of that. Because you're not seeing the elite, uh, uh, the elite competitiveness from Andrew Wiggins that needs to be brought back and it needs to be there. Hank says a much better effort against the Suns. That's the way you bounce back after a tough loss. My my question though is do the Timberwolves have the worst home court in the NBA? <laughs> I hate the two-tone timber floors. Yuck. Thoughts? Eh, I don't like it that much either. Um, I don't like it that much either. It's kind of, I don't know what it is. Um, mm, it's silly. Yeah, I, I, I think it should be just blue paint. That's what I think. Blue paint or black paint, and that's it. You know, in in the paint, as they say. And I think that's it. Uh, Joe. So Philip says, I'm not getting excited about this win, and here is why. We nearly beat Houston, basically demonstrating our potential talent, but without the ability to close out games. And this is, well, Phoenix. Call me a depressed fan if you like. Hank says, hey, a win's a win, mate. But yeah, they totally blew that Houston game. And, and they did. They just, there was a winnable game, and they blew it. Here's some more. Uh, Hank is going to say about the Suns game now. Woo, big analysis. He says, okay, just finished watching the replay of the Suns game, and I think I've pinpointed the Wolves' problem so far this season and why I will get better by season's end. What do you think the difference was between this game and games the past month? Defense? Nope. Talent? Nope. And I agree with that. Youth? Sort of. Coach? Look at ya. <laughs> he says, they are not selfish by any means, or at least on purpose. The biggest difference is... They don't know how to play together. Mm -hmm. Right now, they don't know how to coexist as a unit and use each other's strengths to win games, and they don't recognize it either. Think about it. Every player on this roster now is playing for themselves. How many are playing minutes? How many are playing for minutes? Dunn and Baz. (laughs) How many are playing to prove they dominate? Wiggins and Towns. How many are still trying to find their games? Levine, Gorgie. They figure out how to play together, and I guarantee you're and coach will be able to live with a lot more of the mistakes and the wins will come. Thoughts? That's pretty good. Uh, Yeah, I mean, the defense certainly hasn't changed. And yes, uh, 
they are kind of playing for themselves, aren't they? Uh, occasionally, you'll see, I mean, you'll see passes and such, but it's mostly because they're trying to get away from defense. And if there's a shot to be taken, they take it here and there, just trying to show this off, show that off. And you're not necessarily seeing guys trying to make each other better. Uh, you saw that on occasion in the Atlanta game, though. That that was that was hopeful. You saw more pick and roll, and it helped beat the Hawks, and that's helpful. Pick and roll is more of a team game, obviously, than just hoisting up shots or or individual drives to the basket, which I do like, but not constantly. Of course, you don't want to do anything constantly because then you become predictable. Joe says, Hank. I think I agree with what you say, except for Levine. He improved late last year, and that trajectory has held. I don't see that many games, so I'm asking this back as a question. Are the players trying to play a new style, or are they being instructed into new positions? I would not have paid Deng that money if it was my decision. It, I mean, is it too simple to say his performance is beneath his pay, his pay grade since that contract was signed? Also, do we read anything into Rubio's assets versus whether the team wins or loses, wins or loses. Hank says, I was happy for Rubio for this game against the Suns, but at this stage in his career, if he can't hit jump shots, then I want him averaging double-digit assists. If he can't do that, then, like they say, get the hell out of Dodge. (laughs) Well, now I think about it. Maybe the Levine tag should be Finding consistency. Yeah, yeah, he's not consistent, exactly. Uh, That way, I've been watching it to the players. The way I've been watching it, the players are trying to play a new style, but they have to do that as a unit instead of everyone on this squad. Trying to do it individually. Yeah, I mean, yeah, consistency, obviously, with everybody here. Andrew, he he comes out sharp one day, and the next day he's like half awake, it seems like. Uh, Carl, some days he's just dominating, and some days he's just shooting threes, shooting threes, shooting threes. I don't know what it is, but consistency from everybody, including Zach Levine, of course. You know, he'll have some horrible shooting nights, but then again, I guess that's basketball. Uh, Hank, or excuse me, Vince says, nice road win against the Hawks, mate. Gotta be happy with that, and I do agree. That was very, very, very fun, and the defense is continuing to improve. And, of course, more of a team game offensively, taking their time and, and going to the pick and roll. I want to thank you guys very much for your inclusion with the show. I want to thank you for listening. And I uh, hope I didn't stumble around too much during some of that. There was a lot of reading to do there. Lots of conversation, but it was really good, Hank. I really appreciate everything you wrote there. And never stop, uh, Joe Phillips, Hank McCoy, Tene Brown, Levi Brown. You guys are great. Thank you very much. And those of you out there that have been listening for a while that don't post on here, maybe Jeff Johnson from Flip's Army. Post on uh, this page as well if you could. Uh, please do join at facebook.com forward slash Timberwolves Explosion. All of this information will be in the show description on iTunes, Stitcher, and Double Twist, including the call-in line, which is 209-736-7877. 209-736-7877. It is a voicemail. Do treat it as such. Mention you're calling in for Timberwolves Explosion. Do your statement, shout-out, comment, question, opine, all that good stuff. There's also the Call Now button on the Facebook page, which... Basically, you're calling that same number through Facebook Messenger, meaning you could be from anywhere on the planet, as long as you have Wi-Fi connection or whatever, any type of connection, (laughs) as long as you're online, basically. You call in, same thing. And, of course, there's the audio submission route, which which people have used in the past. There is the recording uh, application on every smart device on the planet out there. Use that. Treat it like a phone call and email it to paladinolive at yahoo.com, paladinolive at yahoo.com. Thank you again in advance for that. Please do out there if you could, if you haven't yet, write a nice positive review for Timberwolves Explosion on iTunes or or Stitcher if you could. It'd be beyond uh, appreciated. I will give a shout out to you on the air and thank you very, very much in advance for that as well. Please tell your friends about the show if you could. Have a Merry Christmas out there, all of you. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to you and yours. And to all, a good night. (laughs) Thank you.